Hey AP Calc AV students, Mr. Record here, taking a look at our third video, which is going to focus on our second example for topic 8.2, position, velocity, acceleration. Now that we know integration, we can toss that into the mix. And even though we're talking about motion typically on the AP exam that's in a straight line, sometimes that straight line could be vertically up and down. And so we're going to take a look at a very interesting amusement park ride called the Space Shot. But before we do that, I can tell you're excited. If you're a student at my school, you likely have this particular page in your notes. If you happen to be watching this outside of Avon, um, I'm not going to read this word for word, but this is a really wonderful document that I like to give to my students. And basically, what it has is just a, a variety of expressions that you could encounter in certain word problems and how those expressions would be translated uh, into mathematics. And there's a lot of different things, a lot of different words that could be used. So if you're interested in, in taking a closer look at this, you can always pause the video and read uh, some of the uh, things a little bit uh, more slowly to um, develop a better understanding. Now, we'll come back to that page as we need, as we encounter the vocabulary that stems from some of these questions. So what we've got is the Space Shot is an amusement park ride that gently raises riders up a tower and then rapidly bounces them up and down using compressed air. Well, that sounds like fun. The velocity of the space shot for time 0 to 14 is modeled by a piecewise linear function as shown below, where t is measured in seconds and v in feet per second. So I don't want you to get the illusion that the space shot is following the path depicted by this curve. The space shot is just going up and down. The direction that it goes is certainly dependent upon the sign of this graph, the sign of its velocity, and of course the rate at which it's traveling is certainly depicted by probably the magnitude, right? So let's take a look at our part A. Part A reads, at what times in the interval 0 to 14, if any, does the space shot change directions? And you must give a reason for your answer. Well, remember, we're going to change directions only if our velocity is negative and our velocity changes signs. So basically, when does your velocity change signs? All right, so we look at this and we say, at what times? Well, the answer to this question would be at t equal 6 for sure, 8 for sure, and I would even throw in 10. So we have 6, 8, and 10. Why? Well, you could just simply say because V of T changes signs at those times. And that's it. You don't have to state whether the sign change goes from positive or negative to negative or vice versa. Just state that there is a sign change. Next up, at what times in the interval 0 to 14 is the space shot the highest and how high is the ride at that time well this one's going to take a little bit more work because in order to do this we're finding the maximum value what are we finding the maximum value of well it would be the maximum height so why don't we let y of t equal the height after all y is a great number to use because when we've graphed uh, we could think about the y-axis as being a height. And we could probably work off of this velocity graph, I think, fairly efficiently. So to do that, we've got to find y prime. Well, guess what y prime is? It is equal to v. We have to determine when is this graph equal to 0, or when is this graph undefined. Those are going to tell us where all of these candidates are are going to be. When is the derivative equal to zero or undefined? Well, if you look at the graph, I see places where the graph is equal to zero, namely 6, 8, and 10. Boy, those sound familiar, right? <laughs> we used them earlier. Now, you don't want to get confused. Some students would say, don't we have to include 5 and 7 and 9 and 10 and 12? Because aren't those places where this particular graph 
features sharp turns? Yes, but that's not where y prime is undefined. That's not, let me say that again, that is not where the derivative of y is undefined. That would be where the derivative of v is undefined. So we don't want to include those, and thank heavens, because that would be a lot more work for us. So what we have are three critical values. But then you have to realize, is this a problem that requires a relative extrema approach or an absolute extrema approach? Because if you use a relative extreme argument to justify absolute extreme, you can lose some valuable points on the AP exam. And the next question, how do you know the difference? Well, I'm here to help you with that. Because in this problem, we are given a strictly closed interval over which this activity is happening. And by virtue of that, that means that the absolute extrema could occur at the endpoints, and therefore those need to be tested as well. So you have to break out your candidates test. And the candidates for this problem, and there are a few, would be 0, 6, 8, 10, and 14. So that's going to be a lot of things that we have to throw into our table. So maybe we should get to that right now. So we'll build a table. I might need to make a couple of columns with my table. No big deal. So what I've got to start is uh, a t value. And then what we're trying to compute is y of t. Now let's recall, if we let t be 0, y would be the integration of the v. All right. Now since the ride starts at time 0, right, and we want to find out how far we're going to travel, how high we're going to travel, right, hopefully the ride starts at time 0. That would not be too safe if the ride started at some other time. Hey, guys, jump on while we're going. Nope, ride's going to start at 0. So y of t is just the integration from 0 to some time value of the v. That time value is going to be what we have in the left column. So in this case, it's probably kind of silly, but you know what? I like to be silly every now and then. Let's figure this out. What is the integral of y from 0 to 0? It's 0. So you're saying that the ride is not any type of height off the ground at time 0? Nope, not when people are getting on. So I doubt that's going to be our max. Let's try another value. How about we throw in 6? So we'll integrate from 0 to 6 of our good friend y of t. Now, in order to do this, you're going to have to do a little bit of area analysis and find out for me, what is the area of this shape? Well, that's just a rectangle. And we could probably pull our, did I say rectangle? I said trapezoid. That is a trapezoid. And so we take 1 half times the sum of the bases. This base is 5, right? 1. Let's do this again. This base is 6, right, all the way across the bottom. And this base would be 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I add those two bases and then be sure to multiply by the height of 1, I'm going to get an answer. And actually, that height is not 1. That height would be 20. Boy, it's really easy to mess up if you've got a scale change. So be careful there. And you would end up with 1 half times 10, which is 5 times 20, so you're going to get 100. Right now, that might be our winner. Now, next, this is where things get interesting. Apparently, 8 would be our next value to try for t and figure out our y of t. But as you can see, 8 is probably not a great answer. It's probably not going to have any shot of being correct. And the reason is because we have just undergone a negative change in our height, right? Since the velocity is negative, that means the ride would be going down. Now, if you exclude 8 in your chart, you have got to give a reason why. And I'm going to be honest, sometimes that reason is just as much work or more than just finding the value at 8. In other words, you would have to state something like, at t equal 8, there is a relative minimum in the height because v changes signs from negative to positive. 
That's a lot of writing. But if you did this, integrate from 0 to 8 of y of t, it may not be as much of work be because you've already got the answer from part t equals 6, right? 100. Now we just have to add this area. And when I say add, maybe I mean subtract, right? Because this is signed area below the x-axis. And so we might be looking at subtracting 1 half base times height. Base in this case would be 2. Careful with this height. 1, 2, 3 blocks means negative 60. So it looks like, and I want not negative 60, just 60, because I've got my negative already. And so basically this is 100 minus 60, which is 40. Definitely, definitely not bigger than my 100. So we go to the next possible answer, 10, which means we are going to be adding some more area right here. And so I would compute the integration from 0 to 10. Where is this ride at that point of y of t? Now again, I've already got 40 by the time I got to time 8. All I'm going to do now is add 1 half base of 2 height of 40, and I end up with 80, which close, but no cigar, not quite up to that 100 feet that I was earlier. Now, if you check the last point, again, it's very likely that you might view this as a waste of time because you're only going to be losing height during this interval, right? Well, if you don't want to compute it, you certainly have an alternative. The alternative would be to write up something along the lines of the function y of t is going to decrease between 10 and 14 because v is negative. You could certainly do that, but by the time you write that up, honestly, it's really no more difficult <clears throat> than to throw 14 in and integrate because you've already got a big part of your answer, right? 80 is what you have before this last triangle. Triangle has a base of 4. You're subtracting it, and it has a height of 40. Kind of running out of room there. So 80 minus half of 4 is 80 minus 2 times 40. 80 minus 80, and what do you know? The height's 0. Oh, maybe that's because the ride's over. It's time to get off, people. Let some no more people come on this ride and enjoy all the fun. So that kind of makes sense logically. So at what times is the space shot the highest? The answer would be at time t equal 100. And the answer, I'm sorry, t equals 6. <laughs> Not 100, 100 seconds. That's a longer ride. At time t equal 6 seconds. And all of your work is there. How high is the ride? We'll say 100 feet. Okay, and I know I'm infringing a little bit on part C there. Part B is definitely the uh, most time-consuming part here. I think the rest of these will go a little faster. Part C, find the total distance the space shot travels during the time interval, the total distance. Now, we had a little bit of a lesson on total distance uh, at the beginning of our video series here, but just to show you, if you were to look back here into this particular table, if we look for total distance, total distance, total, di ah, here it is, total distance traveled, they pretty much tell you what the setup is going to be. And we learned before that we need to take the integration of the absolute value of velocity. Otherwise, we might just get displacement. So always integrate speed or absolute value of velocity to get total distance. So for our particular problem, find the total distance traveled from time 0 to time 14. What we are going to do is integrate from 0 to 14 absolute value v of t. What do we get? Well, what we're going to get is a lot of the same things that we got in part B, except we're going to have to turn negative areas into positive areas. That's the whole point. So we can start off with that nice 100. Remember him. 
But then remember when we had this negative space right here? And what we had here was a 60, right? By the times those twos canceled. This area here is negative 60. But when we reflect it above the x-axis because the absolute values, and I forgot my other absolute value bar, we're going to get a positive 60. Now to that, we're going to add some stuff. What is it that we're going to add? Well, if you remember when we worked this over here, we had in another 40. This is what that area is going to be, 2 times 20. And then we finish up by adding what was the positive version of this area. If you remember, it was 1, 2, 3, 4 times 20, uh, sorry, 4 times 40 cut in half, which turns out to be 80. So all of those numbers add together to make 280 feet. So that would be the total distance that this ride's going to travel as you go up and then down and up and then back down to get off the ride. And then finally, write expressions for the ride's acceleration, velocity, and distance from the ground that are valid on the time interval 10 to 12. Well, I'm going to have to borrow a little bit from the graph here, if you don't mind. So if I go up here, and I'm going to erase any markings on this to make it a little clearer. And 10 to 12, if I highlight that here in, in this light blue, or maybe I use a better color, how about red? That's what we're looking at from 10 to 12. Now that's the velocity graph. If I want the acceleration, I need to take the derivative of this velocity graph. The derivative is the slope. The slope of this graph would be down 20 units over 2 units. So my acceleration is, de is negative 20, right? Negative 20. I'm sorry, let's do that again. It's negative 20 over 1 and negative 20 over 1. I apologize. It really would have been down 40 over 2, which is negative 20. And that takes care of the acceleration. The acceleration is just a constant. Now, to find the velocity, since you have the slope, why not use the point-slope formula? Pretty cool, right? I have a point here. I have a point here, but I might use this point 10, 0, because it looks like it's pretty chill to work with. So if I take v of t minus the y value 0 and set that equal to negative 20 times the quantity t minus the t value 10, that would serve as the equation of my velocity. And what you could do is clean this up, if you so desired, by distributing the negative 20, and you'd have negative 20t plus 200. And that would certainly work. Unsimplified, it works as well. And then finally, a little bit more integration comes onto the scene. What is the distance? And we're using s of t. I, 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 I know I called the distance or the height y of t earlier. It's OK. We know what we're talking about. We're just going to give it the name s here, the distance from the ground, the height from the ground. So in order to figure out this, we are going to have to integrate our velocity, right? Integrate velocity, you get position. But a little catch. We're starting at time 10. So what do we need to know? Well, if we want to find the height that this thing is from the ground from time 10 to time 12, we need to know where we are at time 10. So you're going to begin with s of 10, you guys. That's going to be really important. Start with s of 10. After this, you can add the accumulated change of height by integrating your velocity, starting at 10. But here's the trick. You don't know when to stop because you want to find an expression for the ride's distance from the ground that's valid at any time, t between, between 10 and 12. So to fix that, you just simply make that a t, a t and then 
Again, like we talked before in some previous videos, just select a dummy variable like x. If you use t, it's not the end of the world. I won't take off for it. It just looks better if you use a different variable. And that's all that you'd have to do. If you want to call s of 10 what it is from the table up here in orange, it was 80. But calling it s of 10 still gets the job done. And that takes care of those three particular situations. This is maybe as effective of a problem in preparing you for the advanced placement exam particle motion problem as maybe anything that we've done in class. It's very good, it's very valid, and has a lot of great parts to it. So you want to come back to this one and review it from time to time, especially when you do the test. If you like what you're seeing, as always, please smash that subscribe button and always tune in to future videos because we have so much more to talk about. So appreciate you joining. We'll see you next time.